Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. The health minister talks about the pending fee changes at PMH. We have our delays of the leave pretzels to eat. We've got the story from Bahamas to our customers. Straight ahead. Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson weighs in on the opening of the new school year. Amid pushback over a new policy, the Social Services Department receives 1,500 uniform assistance applications. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight as three former Bahamas Power and Light board members clapped back at Works Minister Jason Bannister over what they termed his inaccurate and misleading statements. The president of BPL's Managers Union is defending the former board, asserting government could have handled the situation much differently. I don't think anyone wants to come in one day and know that they have been forced to resign or they have to vacate the position that they held without a, a transition or a full explanation or a reasoning as to why. In an unprecedented move, the entire BPL board was asked to resign last week. We didn't plan for that or ask for that. You know, we only asked to be um, um, brought to the table so that we can work together to work out the issues. So, again, it was shocking to us. Right, because you all, you, you had written a letter to, to... Yeah, we wrote a letter um, expressing our concerns and hopefully we would have had a meeting to discuss it and, and try and figure out a solution. Um, but that didn't happen. Everything just happened quickly. Former Chairman Donnell Osborne and fellow outgoing board members Nicola Thompson and Nick Dean said in a statement that Bannister's comments did not capture truthfully the root of the real problem encountered by the board. Their statement reads, Interference by the political directorate in a board whose very existence was chartered to be devoid of such activities stands at the root. Certain factions within the board were thereby emboldened and allowed to run amok in the company. The statement continues, the board, in particular the chair, was continually disrespected and undermined, adding, it is ironic that they were removed for seeking to ensure that the board operated in a transparent, fiscally responsible and ethical manner. They added, it is wholly inappropriate that we have not been asked to resign or were not otherwise dismissed in writing. Furthermore, we were only informed about the appointment of the new board via reports in the media. I wouldn't say they were perfect and, and we had a perfect relationship, but again, we were working toward things. But again, I think there's a disconnect between executive management and the board, as it seems. So that has developed into something that mushroomed and exploded into what we see now. That new board was announced on Friday with Donovan Moxie as the new chairman. Meanwhile, Christie said a date for the new board to meet with the unions has not been set as yet. But when it does happen, the manager's union president said there is a lot they must talk about. So hopefully it, it settles, the dust settles. I'm sure it's not going to settle right away, but we hope so that sort of we can move forward and, and keep the lights on. Meanwhile, police are investigating the death of a Caucasian man whose partially decomposed body was discovered in St. Matthew's Cemetery on Church and Shirley Streets last night. Police were called to the cemetery after 7 p.m. where the man's body was spotted with injuries. They're now appealing to anyone with information on his death to come forward. Well, a malfunctioning air conditioning unit at Princess Market Hospital forced health officials to shut down an operating room today. The health minister says fee increases are needed to properly maintain the facility. With more on this, here's Gillian Gray. The woes at the Princess Margaret Hospital continue as today an operating room is out of commission. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands says this is just another example to justify the pending fee changes at the institution. Some people that would have been scheduled for surgery would have to be rescheduled. And um, this, is, this is the challenge of um, managing our healthcare facility without having the funding to do necessary maintenance. We can't have it both ways. Either we're going to fund it properly or we have to accept these types of challenges. The operating room was closed after an air conditioning system malfunctioned, making the room too hot to function in. The hospital's overall cooling system was just replaced earlier this year. Dr. Sands said they have launched an investigation as to why that part of the cooling system malfunctioned. It's unclear how many patients were impacted. The health minister says it's easy for Bahamians to complain about poor conditions at PMH, but they must realize that the facility needs money in order to fully operate and be maintained. 
you get a complaint. Oh, you know, the ward wasn't clean. Oh, you know, they didn't uh, have the CAT scan up and running and they had to go next door to get a CAT scan. Or the ultrasound machine was broke down. The operating room was closed down, as it is today. San says he understands that many cannot afford to pay for services. However, he says currently 87% of persons who show up at the hospital do not pay. As previously reported, some fees at the public health care facilities will increase and others will stay the same. No timeline was given for fee changes, but the health minister says the process has already begun. We are now looking at the fee the recommended fee schedule changes to ensure that we are compliant with the law, that they don't violate any existing uh, agreements, whether that's in uh, various union agreements or just existing policies. So when we actually roll it out, we want to make sure that we don't have to roll it back. Reporting for our news, I'm Jillian Gray. Thanks, Julian. Well, during one of the busiest travel periods of the year, Bahamas here struggled to keep, keep up with its travel schedule over the weekend, with some flights to and from Florida delayed as much as 17 hours. Jared Higgs caught up with some of those irate passengers as they arrived at Lyndon Pinling International Airport. The Bahamas Air says the reason for the delays was technical difficulties, but that didn't appease their customers, many of whom had to sleep in airports in Fort Lauderdale and Miami last night. Two zero eight. The flight is delayed until three thirty this morning. You got to be joking. This viral video of Bahamas Air customers reacting to extreme flight delays is just one example of what passengers on the national fly carrier endured over the weekend. The struggle continued on Sunday night as several flights out of Fort Lauderdale and Miami were put off until the following day. When those passengers arrived in New Providence on Monday, some told us they weren't provided with hotel vouchers and had to sleep on the floor in the airport. They ain't put us in the hotel, we sleep on the floor, stuff like that. My mom wanted vouchers with a little bit of money, that made no sense. So it was garbage. I don't call you some do, so they know what's going on. And they gave a ticket voucher for another flight, but I'm so not interested. I would take a carrier pigeon before I take Bahamas Air again. Some sheriff's deputies were there, I see it as a visual as a visual uh, uh, barrier to say, hey, conduct yourselves accordingly or you can't find yourselves uh, detained. It didn't help that some passengers had to endure the hours long wait in the airport with restless children. At least we could use some blankets because it was extremely cold and we had babies, small children and had to lay on a hard concrete floor all night long. And just reaching home, what time it is now? From 3 o'clock yesterday, we was at the airport. I didn't really have any sleep but because it was very cold and the one jacket I carried was in the bag that I already gone through. A statement released by Bahamas Air on Sunday blamed extreme delays on technical challenges related to the operation of one of the airline's jets. They announced at maybe around 1 a.m that there are no hotels, they checked, all accommodations were booked, then they started offering us bags of pretzels and water out of a bin, and I went to sleep, woke up five hours later, and they were offering donuts out of a box. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that happening to me again. While Fort Lauderdale passengers were informed that there were no hotel rooms available in the city, this Miami passenger says she had a comfortable night in private accommodations. So I need my hotel, my voucher, and my meal allowance, and I must say, it was professionally done, and I didn't have a problem with that. They and they gave you those things? And they give it to me, and I'm glad to be back home. I don't understand why they were fussing and rowing. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson casting doubt over the completion of school appears ahead of the new school year. This as she slammed education officials for excluding BUT leaders from the Prime Minister's recent tour of public schools. Jasmine Brown reports. Wilson was frank in her comments as she insisted she doesn't care who is in office as she says the union will not be left in the dark. Really? I'm going to say it to you all now. I'm really tired of the rhetoric. I want to see action. I want to see execution. Wilson's comments come on the sidelines of the Department of Education's 2018 National Public Schools Administrators Conclave. The union has butted heads with education officials and the Minister of Education in recent months, with the most recent incident occurring just over a week ago. 
On August 10th, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis and Education Minister Jeff Lloyd toured several government schools, along with officials from the Ministries of Education and Public Works. Noticeably absent were union officials. This did not sit well with Wilson, who says union officials were not invited. We have to watch you on television touring the schools and saying that, oh, the schools are going to be ready. Oh, we're going to move them to another venue. You cannot move them to another venue. You cannot say that the schools will be ready. But when you go and you do your tour, then you go on television and you pontificate, then the union has to react. When asked if it added to an already strained relationship, Wilson gave this response. Well, let me say this. I, I take no prisoners. And it does not matter to me who was on the tour. What matters to me is that we have an agreement that has been signed by the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and the Bahamas Union of Teachers that both parties should adhere to. So 7.8 says that the ministry of the government should invite us on an official tour, then I expect to be invited, whether it's the prime minister, the governor general or the queen. Wilson also cast doubt over Lloyd's assurances that the majority of schools will be open in time for September 3rd. She pointed to two schools in New Providence that are of particular concern. Oaksfield Primary School and AF Adderley High School. The contractors are saying that it will be ready in time for school reopening. I, they would have to make me a believer because it seems like there's a lot of um, work to be completed. Wilson says the real test will be when teachers return to schools across the country next week. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, amid criticism over government's decision to slash its uniform assistance budget, families in need could find out this week if they qualify for the program. Acting Director of Social Services Lillian Quan Forbes also responded to criticism. Vani Tu reports. As thousands of students prepare to head back to school, the Social Services Department expects to receive more than 1,500 applications for uniform assistance. Currently, we would have already processed approximately 150 applications in New Providence alone. Also, too, in the Family Islands, we're doing the same exercise, inclusive of Grand Bahama. And so we anticipate that we will go somewhere in the thousand or just over maybe 1,000 or 1,500, depending though on my budget, because we're trying to assist as many with the amount of funds that we have in our budget allocation. Acting Director of Social Services Lillian Quant Forbes says applicants could find out this week if they qualify for uniform assistance. Government's decision to slash the program's budget from $360,000 to $270,000 has been heavily criticized. In response to policy pushback, Forbes insisted they are simply sticking to the budget set by the Ministry of Finance. To each his own, but also understanding where the government sits and where we are as a country and making sure that we comply with what, what the um, Minister of Finance and the Ministry of Finance has said to us, this is your budget, stick to your budget, and that's where we are. Anglerson MP Glennis Hannah Martin has questioned how government could institute free gas for cabinet ministers, then cut back on assistance for the poor, while former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram has urged the Minnis administration to reverse the unpopular decision. Coming up on against that, I am, I am sure, or I believe, let me put it like this, if there is the greatest need and it's shown that we may need additional, then my Honorable Minister will then may be able to present something to Cabinet and to ask for an increase, but that is something that I'm just talking off the top of my head, but also understanding and sticking to what we have, what has been said to us in the budget allocation, stick to it as hard as you can. The department has said it will only help a maximum of two children in a qualifying family, and there are no guarantees that people who were helped previously will receive assistance this year. Forbes encouraged families in need to apply, but stressed that their assistance is strictly for those who genuinely need it. Not persons who would have overextended themselves financially. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonique Toot. All right, thanks Vonique. Still to come on our news, playwright and poet James Catlin remembered. Stay tuned.